Welcome to Books for Success. Today, we're delving into the wisdom within Tiny Humans, Big Emotions by Alyssa Gloria Campbell and Lauren Staubel. Tiny Humans, Big Emotions, 2023, helps caregivers navigate and manage children's emotional outbursts, such as tantrums and meltdowns. It offers strategies to raise emotionally intelligent children by teaching them how to handle complex feelings like anger, sadness, and anxiety. Emphasizing the importance of fostering emotional resilience and well-being in children through a research-based approach that strengthens the parent-child relationship. Who's it for? Parents or carers of young children? Early childhood educators? Parenting coaches and counselors? Subscribe and ring the bell for notifications if you want to keep receiving the knowledge of book summaries about health, wealth, love, psychology, and much more. Don't be shy about dropping your book suggestions for us to summarize. Also, you can use this video as an audiobook summary. Let's grow and succeed together. What's in it for me? Nurture emotional intelligence in children and raise resilient and empathetic individuals. Think of a typical tantrum or emotional outburst from a child. What if this common and natural part of parenting weren't just a moment of stress but an opportunity for growth and learning? This is the essence of fostering emotional intelligence in children, a vital skill for navigating the complex emotional landscapes of life. Emotional intelligence, or the ability to understand and manage one's own emotions as well as empathize with others, is foundational for personal and interpersonal success and the basis for collaborative emotion processing or SEP. This method stands out as a transformative approach to cultivating this emotional intelligence. It involves intentional modeling, active encouragement, clear communication, and step-by-step -step guidance in emotional processing. By recognizing the importance of engaging children in a state of emotional calmness, you can lay the foundations for effective learning. In this summary, you'll learn how SEP provides practical tools and strategies for navigating emotional turbulence in children, mastering the art of setting boundaries, discussing behavior constructively, and proactively preventing emotional meltdowns. These insights offer a roadmap for nurturing emotional intelligence, presenting a framework to prepare not just children but adults as well for life's inevitable challenges. Let's start with a closer look at the SEP method and how it relates to emotional intelligence. Cultivating Emotional Intelligence Through SEP Ask most parents what they want their children to be when they grow up, and you'll most likely get the same answer. They want them to be happy. But what does that mean? Happiness is an elusive, fleeting state, not always a suitable response to a given situation. Sorrow, fear, anxiety these are all natural and important parts of the human experience that children invariably need to navigate as they grow up. A more tangible and enduring goal is for children to become emotionally intelligent, equipped to face the world's challenges with resilience and understanding. Emotional intelligence is the cornerstone of navigating life's complexities, a skill set that enables individuals to recognize, comprehend, and manage both their own emotions and those of others. There are five foundational elements of emotional intelligence. Self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, motivation, and social skills. Self-awareness is the ability to identify and understand one's own emotions and reactions, a crucial first step in emotional intelligence. Self-regulation involves managing responses to these emotions this could be practiced outward calmness or genuine emotional processing. Empathy extends beyond mere understanding to sharing and relating to the emotions of others. Intrinsic motivation is fueled by personal interests and aspirations, driving individuals toward fulfilling, emotionally rewarding endeavors. The final element, social skills, encompasses the ability to interact effectively within social settings, adapting to various social expectations and norms. These elements form the basis of collaborative emotion processing, or SEP. This method is an innovative approach to cultivating emotional intelligence through interactive and experiential learning. It advocates four key teaching methods. Intentional modeling, in which adults demonstrate desired behaviors. Active encouragement to promote emotional expression. Exaggeration for clarity and teaching. And breaking down complex tasks into simpler steps. Central to this method is the recognition that effective learning occurs in a state of emotional engagement and calm, where the rational thinking brain is not overshadowed by the survival-focused amygdala. There are five phases to SEP. 
The first is allowing emotions to exist and be acknowledged, followed by recognizing and naming these emotions. The third phase involves learning to feel secure and experiencing a wide spectrum of emotions over time. The fourth phase, seeking support through coping strategies, emphasizes the importance of managing emotions effectively. The final phase involves resolving emotions by either solving the problem or learning to let go. This comprehensive method not only educates, but also deeply respects the individual emotional journeys of each person. Incorporating mindfulness, self-awareness, and an understanding of implicit biases. SEP challenges adults to be introspective and address their biases so that they may interact more empathetically with children. It also leverages scientific insights from the study of the limbic system and mirror neurons to enrich our understanding of emotional interactions. As the subsequent sections will explore, the practical application of SEP provides a roadmap for nurturing emotional intelligence, offering a robust framework for preparing children and adults for life's inevitable challenges. Navigating Emotional Turbulence, a guide to in-the-moment responses. Imagine a child, overwhelmed by emotions, protesting a diaper change or crying over a breakfast mishap. These moments, while challenging, offer a profound opportunity to practice the collaborative emotion processing method, transforming everyday moment-to-moment -moment challenges into lessons in emotional intelligence. In such scenarios, mindfulness and self-awareness are crucial. The first thing you should do is pause, allowing yourself to process your reactions and the child's emotional state. Emotions are spontaneous and often inconvenient, akin to a flat tire on a busy day, so recognize them as such. Just as one carries tools to fix a flat tire, SEP equips adults with strategies to address these emotional outbursts constructively. Start by acknowledging emotions and allowing them to exist. It's about understanding the emotions underlying a child's behavior rather than merely reacting to the behavior itself. It's important to interpret a child's emotional expression as a call for help or a need for connection, thus shifting the focus from discipline to understanding and empathy. Self-awareness plays a crucial role, enabling adults to recognize their own emotional responses and biases a deeply held belief that children should always be quiet, for example. This awareness is critical in preventing the projection of these biases onto the child's behavior. From a scientific perspective, the roles of the amygdala and prefrontal cortex play a part here, discerning whether to calm or teach in a given situation. In practice, the SEP method involves coaching through emotion processing phases. Mindfulness allows for a response rather than a reaction, setting the stage for understanding the child's emotions. This involves recognizing the difference between a dysregulated and a distressed state in a child, with each requiring a different approach. Dysregulation might need connection and co-regulation, while distress signals a need for immediate soothing. SEP also encompasses the development and application of coping strategies, helping children transition from a state of emotional upheaval to one of calm and readiness for problem-solving. These strategies could be something like physical activities, storytelling, or simple reassurances tailored to the child's unique needs and emotional state. By employing SEP in these critical moments, you can not only help children navigate their emotions but also model effective emotional processing. This method offers a blueprint for nurturing a child's emotional intelligence, equipping them with the skills to face life's challenges with resilience and understanding. In essence, SEP transforms the unpredictable, often turbulent journey of emotional development into a collaborative, enriching experience for both child and adult. Mastering Boundaries in Moments of Challenge during a typical morning in a toddler classroom, a moment of tension arises when Mika, a young child, disrupts the calm by throwing a block. This incident serves as a perfect illustration of the challenges and opportunities presented when setting and holding boundaries with children. Instead of defaulting to a stern reprimand, the teacher opts for a more instructive approach. She gently but firmly sets a safety boundary, guiding Mika toward more appropriate ways of seeking engagement such as using words or gestures to ask for play. This scenario highlights the intricate art of boundary setting with children. The goal is not to enforce blind obedience but to establish a framework of safety and understanding within which children can explore and grow. Effective boundary setting involves a delicate balance. It requires the adult to be firm enough to maintain clear limits while being adaptable to the child's individual needs and responses. Setting boundaries goes beyond merely dictating rules. 
It's an exercise in empathy and communication. When children exhibit challenging behaviors, it's best to delve beneath the surface. Are they seeking attention, expressing a need, or testing their autonomy? Understanding these motivations allows adults to respond in ways that are both supportive and instructive, fostering a deeper connection and understanding. Furthermore, setting boundaries is a dynamic and reciprocal process. It requires adults to be keenly aware of their own emotional responses and to manage them effectively. This self-awareness is crucial in enabling a thoughtful response rather than a reactive one, thereby creating a more positive and educational environment for the child. In this context, boundaries are not just constraints. They are the guardrails that guide children as they navigate the complexities of social interaction and emotional expression. By setting and maintaining these boundaries, adults provide a safe space for children to make mistakes, learn, and grow. This approach not only cultivates emotional intelligence but also builds a foundation of trust and respect, which is vital for healthy development and lifelong learning. Ultimately, mastering the art of boundary setting with children is about striking a balance between guidance and flexibility. It's about understanding children's perspectives, addressing their underlying needs, and creating a nurturing environment in which they can safely explore the world around them, this approach not only helps children develop a sense of responsibility and self-regulation but also enhances their ability to engage with others in respectful and meaningful ways. Talking about behavior and navigating consequences, punishments, and rewards. The timing and method of addressing a child's behavior are critical. It's not just about identifying what was wrong but understanding and fostering the skills needed to make better choices in the future. This approach aligns with the principles of collaborative emotion processing, focusing on the child's ability to access their skills and express their needs in a socially inclusive way. When discussing behavior, it's imperative to distinguish between self-esteem and shame. Self-esteem focuses on actions, I made a bad choice, while shame targets the individual's worth, I am bad. This distinction is vital in nurturing a healthy self-perception in children. The ideal moment for discussing behavior is when both the adult and child are calm, ensuring a receptive and constructive conversation. It's important to understand the child's memory and comprehension capabilities, as these factors influence the ability to process and learn from the discussion. The use of visual aids in storytelling can be effective, especially for children who benefit from explanations beyond verbal ones. Addressing the behavior involves more than just an intellectual understanding. It requires deeper, bodily knowledge. For instance, if a child throws a cup, they may understand it's wrong but may not have yet embodied alternative responses. Here, the SEP method can be instrumental in excavating the underlying reasons for such behavior and guiding the child through appropriate emotional processing. The concept of consequences is essential to this process. Natural consequences, like getting wet from jumping in a puddle, result directly from actions, while imposed consequences, like moving markers out of reach after a child has drawn on the wall, are set by adults. Both types should be related to the situation and without emotional investment from the adult. Understanding intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation is also key. Extrinsic rewards, such as stickers or praise, might encourage immediate compliance but can undermine intrinsic motivation and the development of internal reward systems. In contrast, Intrinsic motivation, fostered through accomplishments and overcoming challenges, leads to a more sustainable and internalized sense of achievement. In navigating consequences, punishments, and rewards, the focus should be on creating an environment of mutual respect and trust. This approach sees behavior as the communication of unmet needs rather than just a challenge to authority. Responding with compassion, curiosity, and connection, as advocated in the SET method, fosters a more profound understanding and helps build emotional intelligence in children. By addressing child behavior through these lenses, you can not only guide children toward better choices but also contribute to their overall emotional and psychological development, laying a foundation for a more empathetic and understanding future society. Proactive Emotional Intelligence – Strategies to Prevent and Navigate Childhood Meltdowns Have you ever wished you could end a child's meltdown before it has even started? This proactive approach to tantrums involves understanding and addressing the child's emotional needs. A key strategy is pre-teaching, which helps children feel prepared and secure about upcoming events or changes. For example, 
explaining in detail what a child can expect at a social event, such as a special dinner, can significantly reduce their anxiety. This technique involves discussing potential scenarios and questions they might encounter, which helps build their confidence and reduces the likelihood of a meltdown. You can also implement proactive solutions like the what if game. This encourages children to think ahead about different situations by asking questions like, what if all the swings at the playground are in use, and guiding them to think of alternative actions. This strategy not only prepares them for the actual event but also enhances their problem-solving skills. Using social stories is another effective method. These stories are crafted to reflect real-life scenarios a child might face, such as difficulty leaving school or sharing toys. These stories provide a blueprint for appropriate responses and behaviors, equipping children with tools to handle similar situations in their own lives. Visual aids are incredibly helpful in making abstract concepts concrete for children. Tools like calendars and schedules give a clear visual representation of what to expect, reducing uncertainty and anxiety. For instance, a detailed schedule, including, put on one sock, then the other, can simplify complex routines for a child. Timers and countdowns also offer a tangible way to understand the passage of time, which can be particularly helpful for transitions or waiting periods. The use of emotion cards and coping strategies helps children identify and express their feelings more effectively. For instance, a child who struggles to communicate her needs can benefit from a choice board with pictures representing different needs or feelings, aiding her in expressing herself more clearly. Validating children's feelings, even if they seem trivial to adults, is crucial. Empathy involves acknowledging their emotions without immediately trying to fix the situation. Phrases like, that's a hard feeling, or you're having a big feeling, are more validating than dismissing their feelings with a but. Overall, building emotional intelligence in children is a long-term commitment. It involves consistent practice, patience, and understanding from adults. Each small step in helping children manage their emotions, whether through proactive strategies, empathy, or validation, contributes to their emotional growth and resilience. This approach aims not only to prevent meltdowns but also to equip children with the skills to thrive emotionally throughout their lives. Final Notes Emotional intelligence in children is cultivated through understanding, empathy, and proactive strategies. This concept is captured in the Collaborative Emotion Processing Method, which involves acknowledging and processing emotions effectively, setting thoughtful boundaries, and engaging in constructive discussions about behavior. The use of storytelling and visual aids plays a significant role in making abstract concepts tangible for children. This approach not only helps in preventing and navigating childhood meltdowns but also equips children with essential life skills. These strategies foster resilience, problem-solving abilities, and empathy, paving the way for children to grow into emotionally intelligent adults who contribute positively to society. Thanks for being part of our insightful voyage. If our summary piqued your interest, we encourage you to dive into the complete book for a deeper understanding. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more content if you're new here, and share it with others who might find it valuable. Keep on reading, discovering, and advancing until our next adventure.